Uh, a very good evening uh, to you all, uh, dear brothers uh, in Christ. Uh, so we thank our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ for giving this wonderful opportunity to yet again uh, discuss His wonderful words of life. Uh, so, uh, uh, so today uh, we're going to see uh, what is the meaning of a church uh, in the Bible. So we all know. And uh, we all go to churches, isn't it? So if somebody asks you which church you're going, generally the people that, oh, I'm going to uh, St. Mary's Basilica or else I'm going to uh, FGAG church. So that's not the terms. We see the uh, people use, I'm going to St. Peter's church. I'm going to Methodist church. So what do you mean by church? You see, dear brethren, the church, you see, uh, means uh, generally everybody believes that the uh, church should be, uh, you see, in a particular uh, way. The structure of the church should be in a particular way. You should have a cross on the top of it. Uh, there should be a bell. You see, all those things, uh, you see, that is the uh, church. Uh, that's the real uh, idea of the church. Okay. Now, if I ask a question, uh, was there a church in the wilderness? You see, that means in the days of... Uh, Moses, was there a church? Uh, is it uh, mentioned in the Bible? Uh, if you say, uh, many people will wonder, uh, how is it possible that uh, uh, during the days of Moses, a church can be there? But church means uh, that has come only after Jesus. Uh, you see, uh, Christians are gathering there, so the church is there, so only it has come only after uh, Jesus' first advent. Uh, so before that one, there is no church at all. Okay. So let us study. And let us read on verse Acts 7.38, brother. Peter, brother. Okay. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which speak, speak to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give into us. Very good, brother. So, here if you see, Moses, uh, you see, it is uh, that incident where the people of Israel were led out of Egypt uh, to the Canaan land. And on the way, you see, the people of Israel were in the wilderness. Uh, and uh, there in the wilderness, uh, that is the place that uh, God called Moses to Mount Sinai and uh, gave him the law. It says, uh, uh, the this is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spoke to Moses in Mount Sinai. Now, how can a church be in the wilderness? You see? That means, so what is the meaning of the church? How can it be in a desert land where there is nothing, first of all, to sustain some life? Then how can there be a church? So, which building did Moses construct? Okay. Let us read one more verse, Acts 8, 1, brother. Up, Acts of the Apostles, 8, chapter, verse 1, brother. And Saul was connecting unto the death, unto his death, and at that time there was a great uh, persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. Very and good, they were all scattered hmm. about throughout the region of Judah and Samaria accept the apostles. Very good, brother. So it says there is a great persecution against the church. So great persecution against the church means what? Did they persecute the building? Or did they cause harm to the building? So here it says there was great persecution to the church in Jerusalem. That means what? Did they come? Did the build? Did the people come and uh, smash the building? Did they come and uh, demolish the building? Does it uh, mean like this one? Dear then and what is the meaning of the church? We need to study. Okay, let us read one more verse in Romans 16 5. Romans 16, likewise, 5. Gre hmm. likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Lived my hmm. will of Epientos, who is the fruits, first fruits of. It's a into it's Christ. See, likewise, 
greet the church which is in their house. See, church means what is a building. Then how can a church be inside a house? Generally, church means what? It's a building, no? You see, a particular uh, dais should be there, a particular bench should be there, everybody can sit, a cross should be there, a bell should be there, this, there should be a pulpit, you see, there should be a choir group. So everybody believes that uh, this is the church. But here it says, there was a church inside the house. So how can a church be inside the house? Dear brethren, so all these verses puts a question into our mind saying, what is the meaning of church in the Bible? You see, in the Bible, the word church is from the Greek word ecclesia. Ecclesia means what? If you see, it means the called out ones. The church in the Bible actually means the called out ones. Read 1 Corinthians 1st chapter, 2nd verse. 1 Corinthians 1st chapter, 2nd verse. Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, Corinth to them that are uh, sanctified in the Christ Jesus, called to be signed with all that in every place, Call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. Thank you, brother. So here, Apostle Paul gives the correct definition of uh, church. It says, unto the church of God, which is at Corinthians. So what is the church of God? It says, the meaning it says, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. So actual meaning of the church in the Bible is called to be saints, the ones who are pure and holy in the name of Christ, who are cleansed of their sins in the name of Christ, by the blood of Christ, and who are called what? To be saints. Dear brethren, this is the real meaning of the church as per the Bible. But today, you see, the word church, the meaning is totally changed you see, church means what? Everybody thinks oh, church means building. You see? Then, why? Because church means uh, that is the concept in the world. Uh, you see? But uh, earlier uh, in the days of the apostles and all, this was not the thought. The church, uh, you see, has actually a people, not uh, the building. You see? It's not the building. Therefore, it says in Acts 7, chapter no, 38, uh, where it says that the church which was in the wilderness. Who are they? Which church was there? There was no Christ at all. So the church was there. Actually the gathering of the Jewish people. Under Moses. That gathering. That congregation. Was called as a, a church. So. Initially when the apostles began to do their Lord's work. And open the ministry. The people used to gather. A small small places in the houses. You see, today we have cottage meetings now, where in particular house, all the brethren come and have fellowship. That was the usual trend of all the places, all the churches used to gather there, you see. But later on, when huge numbers began to come, especially during the period of Constantine, the emperor of Rome who got converted to Christianity, he offered a lot of you see, privileges, uh, you see, and opportunities uh, for one who becomes Christians, uh, like for job, money, land, marriage, etc., etc. So, because of this one, many of the Roman people got converted to Christianity. And what happened? Uh, you see, the congregation became big. When the congregation is big, uh, of course, uh, you see, you can't accommodate in house. That is the time that Constantine Emperor built big, big cathedrals, big, big churches, buildings. So since then, what has happened? The church name was given to the building instead of the people. So importance came to the building rather than the people. Okay. Now church means what? We saw it's a group of people. Who are they? This is a Christian. Who is a Christian? You see, in older days, uh, a Christian was a person who, if slapped on one of a chick, uh, 
you will turn the other cheek around. That was the true character of a Christian, dear brethren. You see, but today, you see, the meaning itself is totally changed. Now, you know who are the Christians? Huh? Who behave vulgarly, who don't wear proper clothes, who do all sorts of sinful activities. And uh, go and confess uh, to the Father, you see. And go and confess to the Lord and ask forgiveness. These are called as Christians. Uh, who, who wear very, very small, small clothes. Uh, these are called as Christians. Uh, you see, who marry today and tomorrow they are divorced. They are called as Christians. Who, who drink nicely, who smoke nicely. They are called as Christians. Uh, so today what has happened? The word Christian itself has a different meaning. Therefore, some people tell them, oh, you are too Christian. True Christian means what? Uh, there are false Christians also. That is how the world has become today. You see, and moreover, you know, the many, many uh, big, big villains uh, yeah, in uh, very uh, places, you see, like for cinema, you can take it even jail also. The majority of them are Christians. Uh, you see, why? Because they have become a namesake Christians. Uh, just because of namesake, they would have put the name as Tom, Dick and Harry. You see, just because you change the name, does it become a Christian? No. Actually, in their walk of life, uh, literally there is no Christianity at all. So, what has happened? Uh, you see, so this is how the world has become the brain. So, the real uh, Christians, uh, you see, that picture has gone and the false Christians have come into the mind of everybody. Therefore, you see, uh, if you go to the jail, no, many and a majority of them are Christians. Peter, Danny, Rosie, Lily, you see, all these are famous villains. <laughs> huh? Famous villains. Why? Because that is how Christianity is famous today, dear brethren. But originally it was not so. So today we are going to see different types of Christians. See, you can all see this is the God's plan of the ages which God has made for the whole mankind. We have studied the subject about three worlds. You see, that is called the first world and this is the second world and this is the third world. So these three worlds are there and in this first world, we can see a small pyramid there. You see, a small pyramid A. And that small pyramid A is actually Father Adam. You see, Father Adam, huh? So, Adam was created as perfect. He was a perfect pyramid. Huh? You see? Uh, so, once uh, Adam was created, he was created on a plane of N. N is a plane of perfection where there is no sin. You see, you are holy, harmless. You see, in the sight of God. But when Adam ate the forbidden fruit, he fell from the plane of perfection to the plane of sin and death. And through Adam, the entire mankind are today walking in the path of death. But, you see, we can see that uh, small pyramid A is very small. But below that one, there is a pyramid that is called as B that is quite bigger than A. What is this one? When man was created, he was created alone. Only one pair was created. But when they came out of Eden... The generation through that one man, one pair, continued and uh, became larger. Hence, uh, we see that uh, that is still uh, under a uh, plane, uh, you see, uh, on the top of, uh, on plane R. That means the plane death. The world of mankind are condemned in death through Adam. But, if you come a little bit further, you can see one more small pyramid that is G. What is that one? That is a perfect pyramid that represents our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, when he was born on this earth, he was born as a second Adam. As Adam was created, you see, perfect in the sight of God, in the image of God, without sin. Similarly, Jesus also came in the same nature. Why? To pay a ransom. Okay? So, anybody today who believes in Jesus, their sins are forgiven and God considers them as they are sinless in God's sight. Why? Because of the blood and the sacrifice of Jesus. So, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. We know these verses very well. So, he that believes in Christ, 
the bible says he sins are forgiven his sins are forgiven means what god considers him from the sinful condition to the perfect condition god considers that he is no more a sinner so man is at the perfection level okay dear brethren so here if you see uh, further in the gospel age you see we can see a pyramid which is above plane n and little bit uh, below plane you see uh, n so what is this one we can see four divisions uh, n m p q so what is this division sir huh? see you can see here no uh, what is this division today we are going to see the various types of christians in the gospel age see in the gospel age we can see the pyramid but uh, one specialty of the pyramid is that uh, it is on plain n but it doesn't have his head the top is not there you see why who is that of the church it is our lord jesus christ now where is our lord jesus christ is he on earth if you see dear brethren he is not on earth he is resurrected and he is in heaven hence you can see the head of the church that is the perfect pyramid signify there it represents the lord jesus christ who is in heaven he is the head of the church okay now here if you see there are four categories of christians here n m p and q what are there first let us read about q the category q is attached to plane n but not above plane n we remember very well you see plane n means what it is a plane of death they are not above but below below means what they are still sinners they are not justified but compared to the entire world of mankind who have fallen into the sinful and death condition they are quite better because they are attached to christ what does it mean you see dear brethren these are the people who are namesake not even namesake even worse than that one those type of christians these christians they go to the church you see they go to the church as they go to other temples you see other mosque and all these things just casually just for entertainment sake or just for some belief that's all but not a belief in the blood of christ that the blood of christ cleanses us from all sins they don't believe that jesus died for our sins they don't even accept that jesus as a personal savior why because first of all they don't realize that jesus died for us and we are sinners you simply you see go simply trust him they don't have faith there is lot of difference between having faith on the lord so they don't have faith on the lord they don't worship our lord with the true heart along with our god they also worship other gods also you see like uh, if there is a merry festival they go for uh, uh, church if there is a, there is a mari festival they will go for mari temple you see they don't believe in the bible either they don't believe in jesus 100% they don't believe that uh, jesus was born birth was born by a virgin they don't believe in the virgin birth of christ they believe in other false theories like evolution you see all these things and all which are against the bible since they don't believe the bible they speak lightly about uh, jesus christ so these people in the bible are called as hypocrites so they are below plane n that means they are not justified they are disguised as christians they are not genuine christians they are not really christians at all they disguised hypocrites this is a quite a number not sorry not so huge number which is represented by the you see the uh, pyramid the structure uh, you see the the group called as uh, you see q okay now let us come a little bit above we can see one big group of p who are p you see the p group are the biggest group in this world you see today the majority of them are composed of this one who are these if you see these are believers they believe in the blood of christ hence they are on plane n not below plane n that means they are justified justified means their sins are cleansed from the blood of christ 
they are no more sinners in the God's sight. They are perfect. Now, who are these? Who are these believers? If you see, dear brethren, these believers are the people who go to the church regularly. They believe in Jesus that Jesus died for the sins. You see, they accept that Jesus is a personal savior. They realize that they are sinners. They have faith on Jesus. They trust in the Bible. They believe in the Bible. They are repented from the sins. You see, they sing songs for God. They sing praises to Him. You see, they do things which are pleasing to God. You see, they attend all the cottage meeting, all the prayer meetings. You see, they sing songs. Everything they do. You see, and they give charity also. Everything is there. But they have their own ambition. They won't give up their ambition. You see, they want uh, uh, comforts, uh, rich uh, life. Uh, you see, they want comfortable and uh, a rich life. Uh, dear brethren. That is the reason they believe in Jesus. They want blessings, all the problems. So they want Jesus to solve it. They want Jesus to protect them. You see, and uh, they want Jesus to fulfill all their desires. They want to study well. They want to be very rich, very popular. So, they actually don't do anything for the Lord. They go to the church. Regularly they go. They attend cottage meetings. Everything they do. They don't watch movie. They don't watch cinemas. They don't try to involve themselves in worldly things. They don't speak bad words. All these things are there. But they don't sacrifice anything for Christ's sake. Sacrifice means what? That which is, should cost us something, we need to leave it for God's sake, for Christ's sake. They don't sacrifice. They don't take any risk for, for Christ's sake. Uh, you see? But they try to give up sin. Dear brethren, you see, huh? they think by giving sin, they're doing very great uh, this is sacrifice to the Lord. No, dear brethren. No. We don't have the right to sin at all. It is not our right. God told you should not sin. But even then if you sin, that is violating God's law. So God has no, you see, law that you, you should have communication with a sinner. But it is grace that is speaking to us through Christ, forgiving all our sins. Therefore, these are the people who are living, uh, trying to live a godly life as they think by leaving sin. This is not what Jesus desired. Uh, uh, this is not what God's will is. Uh, many think they try to give up sin. That is sufficient. No, dear brethren. You see, no, that is not sufficient. Furthermore, has to be go gone. So these are the people who have faith, but they don't show it in action. You see, they trust in the Lord. But when it comes to putting in action, they don't uh, literally put into action. You see, dear brethren, and this is the huge crowd today we can see in the whole world. Majority of them are like this. They are good believers. They believe in Jesus. No doubt at all. They, they are very good believers. But only believers only. You see? Then what else is required, brother? You might ask. Let us see what the Bible says. See, in the days of Jesus also, there were so many people. Thousands, thousands came behind him. You see? Let us see once what happened. How many people came? Luke 12, 1, brother. Luke 12, chapter 1st verse, brother. Okay. In the meantime, when they were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, ah. he began to say oh. unto his disciple, first of all, we were of the living of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Ah, you see? What happened, it seems, sir? Innumerable. Multitude followed him, it seems. Innumerable. Sir. You can't number it all. So much a big crowd, dear brethren. We know 4,000 people, 5,000 people followed. But this is much more than one. It, is, it says, it was in so much, they trod one upon another. One upon another, you see? And they trod, it seems, so huge crowd. Imagine if there is a huge crowd of a a uh, minister coming. Uh, any good uh, evangelist is coming. A big crowd will gather on lakhs of people. So, so many people used to gather. Uh, you see, then uh, you should be very happy. You know? oh, so many people are following Jesus. Uh, no, dear brother. Uh, 
these all followed jesus only for benefit jesus whenever everybody came he healed everybody you see he made every them everybody whole and sent them sometimes in the bible says that jesus did not have time to eat also you see and the entire city was at his door read mark 133 brother mark 133 and all the city was gathered together at the door mm, all the city was gathered together at the door aha the entire city was gathered at the door dear brother see jesus healed everybody jesus blessed everybody but they all believed jesus you see they all believed jesus that's the reason they came but did jesus believe them that's the main question so this might claim that we are followers of jesus we are disciples of jesus but jesus should tell no these are my disciples read what jesus said about these people john second chapter 23 to 25 brother now when he was in jerusalem at the passover in the feast they many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did but jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify on man ah, of man you see many people believed in him why because of the miracles which he did today also many people come no huge crowd why they come only for miracles uh, you see but they believed jesus but did jesus believe them no but jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that anybody should testify uh, about man he knew everybody why they are coming only for benefit uh, so did jesus believe them huh uh? if jesus did not believe those people those days itself now will he believe all the entire crowd or lakhs of people if they come for a meeting no jesus did not believe these believers uh, therefore they have ran once what happened a huge crowd was following him great multitude immediately jesus stood he turned to the great multitude and said if any man wants to be my disciple he has to follow this condition what is that condition deny yourself carry the cross and follow me unless you do this one you cannot be my disciple itself jesus said read brother luke 14 chapter 25 to 27 brother and there went great multitudes with him and he turned and said unto them if any man come to me father and mother and wife and children and brethren and brother and sisters a and his own life also he cannot be my disciple and whoever both not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple aha uh -huh. see what did you say whosoever don't bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple Hey, what did Jesus say? If any man come after me, first, what he should do? He should hate his father, mother, wife, children, brethren, sisters. Yeah, his own life. What is this hate, brother? Actually, that hate word is not a proper translation. It should be loveless. Jesus never told to hate everybody. He told to love less. That means first importance in life should be given to God and Christ. You see, huh? love god more than your father and mother father and mother you know these days uh, once if they are married they will forget about the father and mother i all let them go whatever they want then comes uh, brother sister uh, they also get married they also get separated uh. next is what uh, oh wife and children oh that's very difficult uh, to love lord more than the wife and children is it possible ah uh? uh, no that is very difficult uh. whenever the meetings their wife will tell oh today you don't go to meeting today come let us enjoy let us go to the marriage what will the uh, brother do oh wife is important lord will always be there come we'll go that is uh, loving the family more than god uh, they have then jesus said if any man loves uh, 
these things more than me who cannot be my disciple. So if uh, somebody has to be a disciple, he has to love the Lord supremely above everything. You see, then what? Uh, deny himself. Uh, deny himself. Hate himself is what? Uh, uh, whenever we have a class, uh, uh, though we have a lot of responsibility, a lot of work is there, you see, a lot of commitments are there, we need to sacrifice, leave all those things for the Lord's sake and come for the meeting. Uh, that is denying ourselves. Carry the cross means what? Uh, everybody thinks it is literally. Hence, you know, in the church, what they do? The father puts white cloth, backside there will be a big cross that is stitched. Or else they put a dollar, cross dollar and walk. This is not carrying cross. Carrying cross means what? Uh, carrying difficulties, responsibilities, taking risk for Christ's sake. That is... Uh, Ah, carrying the cross. That's what Jesus did, no? He took his uh, cross for our sake. For He risked his life for our sake, dear brethren. This is what we need to do. Deny yourself. First importance in life should be given to God. Next, uh, you see, carry the cross. Take responsibilities for Christ's sake. What are you doing for the Lord? Just not giving money is sufficient. No, Lord doesn't need money at all. The third thing is what? Uh, Follow me. Follow the footsteps of Jesus. As Jesus lived in this world, similarly, we should be. Then he says, you cannot be my disciple. If you fulfill this only, you will just be my disciple, dear brethren. Disciple means what? One who follows the footsteps of Jesus. As Jesus lived in this world, a sacrificial life, same way we should live. So many people misunderstand this one and think, oh, brother, oh, that means we should leave everything and go. And do village ministry, jail ministry, go and build orphanages, go and build home for the age, care for the poor, go and build hospitals. No, 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 no. Jesus never did any of these things. Underline it. Jesus never built any hospital. Jesus never built any home for the age. Jesus never uh, you see, took care of any orphans. You see? He never, uh, you see, did all these things, uh, hospitality or NGO work. Jesus never did that. This is not sacrifice for Christ's sake, dear brother. This is sacrifice for only for your sake. Uh. This is not the sacrifice which the Lord is pleased. Uh. You might be pleased. Uh. We might think that this is we are doing for the Lord. This is not what the Bible says. Jesus never did. Neither did the apostles did this one. You see, did any of the apostles did that? No. Then how should we be? Our example is our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you see in the chart, Jesus is on plane in. Okay? Now what did he do? This was a plane of perfection. When he came at the age of 30 years, he baptized himself into, you see, River Jordan. You see, that is plane M, the plane of consecration. That is called as consecration. One, a plane where one inner immerses himself in consecration, in baptism. That means dedicating his life to the Lord. That is called as consecration. So Jesus, at the age of 30 years, he consecrated himself to the Lord and came to plain Yam. So Jesus began his race from this place. Jesus was a perfect man. He had all the rights, like Adam. You see, he could have lived comfortably. He could have done good business. He could have earned a lot of money, be rich, be happy, everything. You see, Jesus... Could have done all these things. But did Jesus do? No. Why? See, Jesus was wiser than Solomon. The Bible himself says. Huh? Jesus himself says, there is a wiser than Solomon here. Solomon period, you know, how it was so glorious. Whenever the house was constructed in the Solomon's time, if there is a crack in between the wall, they used to melt gold and put in between the wall, it seems. They used to never use mortar or cement, but put gold in the temple, you see. Melt it and put it, pour it there. That much cheap gold was in the Solomon's uh, time. It says it was like a value of uh, gold was like a value of stone. You see, imagine if Jesus, who is wiser than Solomon, if he would have thought of earning money and built a big dynasty empire of himself, he could have done it wonderfully, dear brother. He could have bought the entire world. Then he would have been the richest person in this world. But did Jesus do that one? No. 
Why? That was not God's will. God's will was that he sacrificed his life for Adam. Sacrifice. So Jesus sacrificed all these things. Sacrifice means God. That which should cost us something. That which is precious to us. Give it for the sake of the Lord. That is consecration. See what was our Lord's condition uh, when he came to baptism. You see. He was ready to die for the Lord at the age of uh, 12 years. But what was his heart condition when he took baptism? Read. Hebrews 10 chapter 5 to 7. Hebrews 10 chapter 5 to 7. Brother. Wherefore, when he come into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou world is not, but a body has thou prepared me in burnt offerings and sacrifice for his for sin, thou hast uh, had no pleasure then said uh, I Lord I come into the volume of book it is written of me to do why to do the will of God mm. you see what was the Jesus heart condition it says lo I come in the volume of book it is written of me lo I come O Lord why I am coming to do your will you see, Jesus came into this world to do the Father's will. Why? Because God was not pleased with the sacrifices. Solomon himself gave so much sacrifices, so many bullocks, you see, so many goats, lakhs and lakhs of, you see, sacrifices. But Jesus, if he is greater, he could have offered many more things. But this was not God's will. You see, what was God's will? You see, what was God's will is that do the Father's will in this flesh. What is that one? To offer himself as a living sacrifice. That was God's will. And Jesus did this one at baptism. Read Romans 12. Romans 12, 1. Romans 12, 1. Romans 12, 1. I be, beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that a present your body is of living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Very good, brother. See, it says, uh, Apostle Paul, what does he say? I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Uh. See, living sacrifice, this is act acceptable to God. Uh. This is a very reasonable service. You see, dear brethren, huh? what does he say? Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Living sacrifice means what? Huh? Just to kill ourselves, to die. Huh? No, no, no. Even as you are living, you should live for the Lord. Day by day, you should live for the Lord. Sacrifice your preferences. Leave out your desires. Leave out your ambitions. Why? For Christ's sake. You see? We have to live a sacrificial life. You know, today the parents sacrifice so much to take care of the children. They tell, no, you have done so much for my children. I have left all my desires, happiness. Why? Because I want them to stay happy. This is the way we need to do sacrifice not to please somebody or human beings, to please our God. Living sacrifice. I beseech you by the mercies of God. We were sinners. We had nothing you see, there was no rule that God should save us, but God still came and uh, came, you see, and through his son, uh, you see, has redeemed us. Uh, you see, he came in search of mankind. Uh, that was a wonderful grace, dear brother. So, all these things, uh, you see, we need to sacrifice to the Lord. So, therefore, if you see, dear brethren, so this is following the footsteps of Jesus. So, in the gospel age, if you see, uh, God is not looking this P, group, big group, group of P. Who are they? Big believers, good believers. You see? No, no. What is God looking at? God is Lord looking at the chosen people. He is not looking at the great multitude of following. Just come for pleasure, for blessings. No. Jesus turned to them and said, If you want to be my disciple, fulfill this condition. Deny yourself, carry the cross and follow me. 
this condition who fulfills these are only called the true church the followers of christ now you tell me uh, in the entire world of christianity uh, are all the christians like this are all the christians uh, offering their body as a living sacrifice to lord brother tell me i think not ah correct not 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 everybody hence you see the big group god is not seeking them in them who is desiring to follow the footsteps of jesus only god is searching them see jesus tells this one matthew 22:14 brother matthew 22:14 for many are called but few are chosen ah many are called many are called everybody calls but among them who are chosen few are chosen so calling is not important being of the chosen eh, class is important now you tell me you want to be a believer of christ or follower of christ tell me follower of christ follower of christ so just believing is not sufficient follower of christ means offer our bodies as a living sacrifice see jesus healed 10 lepers you remember the story no huh? when jesus was coming on the way to jerusalem the 10 lepers shouted oh lord master son of david have grace please grace and mercy on us so jesus looked at the 10 lepers and said okay huh? you please go and show your body to the high priest and offer sacrifices as uh, per the law so as they were going what happened da the leprosy was healed now as soon as the leprosy was healed what happened how many people came back brother to give gratitude to god one very good brother only one you know that is the condition of christianity today everybody takes the blessings and forgets god they think that only money is sufficient just give some 10% that is sufficient no no, no. god is not a broker he is not doing any money business here you see no he doesn't need money in psalms it says no everything in the mountain every thing in the hills is his if he wants he can take anything he doesn't need money he needs what gratitude how much you do for the lord what are you doing for the lord how much are you following his footsteps how much are you denying yourself read what did jesus say luke 17 brother luke 17 uh 16 17 एटीन ब्रदर सिक्स थ्रू हिमसेल्फ जीजस and thanked him and he was a samaritan jesus asks were not all ten cleans where are the other nine was no one found to return and give a praises to god except this foreigner then he said to him rise and go your faith has made you well mm. see Where are not the ten who were cleansed? Where are the other nine? Is it only one who is there to glorify God? This is the condition they have done. So we saw today what is the meaning of the church and uh, who are the true Christians as per the Bible. It is not just believing Christ. No, we need to take one step ahead and become the followers of Christ. The followers of Christ means what? Deny yourself. carry the cross for jesus offer your body as a living sacrifice sacrifice means what he should he should he should uh, cost us something what do you say he should uh, really uh, pay us something okay that is called as sacrifice like for example if you have only uh, 10 rupees if uh, a brother or a sister is in very trouble you see uh, we we'll lend it we we we'll give it off completely why because we love our brothers and sisters more than that one that is sacrifice that should cost us something you see 
we have all got the rights and privilege to live a comfortable life no problem at all no doubt at all god doesn't ask you to all these things that's a that's a man's blessing but being a christian you need to deny all, all these things you need to sacrifice you need to leave all these things for what sake for christ say for the sake of the truth for the sake of the brethren this is you see living sacrifice daily even as you living every day walk in his footstep prove your faithfulness to god this is what jesus did dear brethren he could have lived a very happy comfortable life study well earn nicely very big job all this no jesus did not do that one he lent he sacrificed everything to do lord's will so many are called few are chosen so next week we'll continue this class this will class will go for another 3 to 4 weeks okay say anybody got any questions you can ask anybody any doubts any questions